It is truly a pleasure to be with you tonight. When we celebrate the generosity that is at the heart of St. Francis College, the genuine altruism at the center of every St. Francis community member makes these efforts enriching on both a professional and personal level. The ability to aid others in providing the gift of education and changing lives is its own reward. And meeting new friends is a welcome benefit. Tonight, we celebrate friendship. The friendship that Bob Cattell and Michael Buzzy O'Keefe, as well as all in this room, share with St. Francis College. Bob's energy and enthusiasm crosses the corporate sector into classrooms across New York City. That includes Long Island, by the way. In true Franciscan spirit, he strengthens the community by investing in its students and their dreams. Much like St. Francis College, Buzzy offers the right mixture of ingredients and a recipe for success in preparing others to realize their dreams. For St. Francis College, it takes a menu of very generous, passionate, and caring individuals like Buzzy to create a gourmet educational experience. Both Bob and Buzzy exemplify the words of St. Francis. It is in giving that we receive. There are so many lives to be changed. There is so much work to do. We do it together. We do it tonight. To commence the evening, I pass the microphone to John Tully, St. Francis College, class of 67, and the chairman of our board of trustees to formally begin tonight's evening. Thank you very much. It's my uh, honor and privilege to welcome you all tonight. Before I uh, do, let me mention again the silent auction that's out there. Some of those pages are wide open and ready for bids. And uh, I think it would be a great idea for everybody to go out there and bid, except on the items where my name is. I'm hoping to uh, pick off a couple of those things. But uh, the com I know I got the competition from table one is on a couple of those things. Uh, thanks again for joining us for this, our 50th uh, annual Charter Award dinner. You know, with the exception of commencement, when we proudly send forth a new class every year of graduates to apply their knowledge to the betterment of our communities, this Charter Award dinner is really the most important event we have. It gives us the opportunity to highlight and celebrate the over a century and a half of service that St. Francis has provided through its education for the betterment of life in Brooklyn and beyond. We'll include Long Island, and I'll include just the other side of the river too, Manhattan and up to the Bronx. This dinner provides us with an occasion also to honor the professional accomplishments of distinguished New Yorkers and their contribution to the quality of life in our city and to the college. But I think most importantly, it enables us to raise crucial funds that will allow us to continue our mission of serving our students. I know you'll be pleased to learn that all the monies raised this evening through your efforts and the gifts of others who are not here, as well as the funds we will raise through the raffle and the Rayo's uh, raffle, will be directly applied to student scholarship support. Without this funding, many of our students would be unable to attend St. Francis and enjoy the benefits that so many of us enjoyed of a Franciscan education. I heartily thank you for your support of the college's service. And I'm delighted to share with you the news that to this point, we have raised $435,000 for scholarships at the college. And this is because of your efforts. Now tonight we honor two men who have done much to make Brooklyn and our city, the entire city, a better place to live. Mr. Robert Cattell and Michael Buzzy O'Keefe. Now, <laughs> you will hear more of their accomplishments and more about their service to the community later in the program. 
but I would briefly touch on what makes them special to St. Francis. As we know, St. Francis College has been a part of Brooklyn for over 150 years, and we have, during that time, maintained vital partnerships with many of the major businesses headquartered in downtown Brooklyn, perhaps none more so than the old Brooklyn Union Gas Company, because 180 Remsen Street was the home of Brooklyn Union Gas before it became our home. Now, Brooklyn Union Gas has indeed evolved, too, through Keyspan and now to National Grid. And many of the college's graduates have found very rewarding careers at, we'll call them National Grid, even though the old ones still like to say Brooklyn Union. Yeah. But Bob Cattell's career in the energy industry began at Brooklyn Union and took them through, uh, took that company through its time as National Grid. Now, I think perhaps more importantly, throughout his career, he has generously supported many professional, civic, and philanthropic organizations as a board member, as a donor, and he's always been a good friend to St. Francis College. Now, back in 1977, when Buzzy O'Keefe was opening the River Cafe, it was a time in which the waterfront wasn't doing so well, and perhaps Brooklyn wasn't doing as well as it should. And uh, it had been many years since the likes of uh, Diamond Jim Brady and Lillian Russell would come across that river and be regulars at famous old Brooklyn watering holes like Gage and Tolner's, Lundy's. And when Tom was giving me some of this research, he left out another restaurant, Tappan's, which I felt a little slighted by because it was, uh, that restaurant began in 1845, right across the street from Lundy's, and was a landmark through 1960. Now, that would be a paid advertisement if my grandfather-in-law was still alive, because he was, uh, I think, Big Ed Whalen was one of the last owners. And uh, Maureen's probably embarrassed that I bring that up now, but a part of old Brooklyn. I'm a history major. We have to do that from time to time. But what Buzzy revitalized in Brooklyn was the culinary era that had been absent for a long time. And he ushered that in with the River Cafe. And he didn't stop there. He came back across the river to this side and started up many successful businesses. And I don't think we can go without commenting on the pancakes at the, at the Pershing Square Cafe. I mean, there's something to be uh, remembered. It's the Pershing Square. <laughs> but again, more importantly, he always gave back to the community in a quiet way, in a generous way. He supported many philanthropic endeavors, ranging from Catholic education to the environment. Now, both of these gentlemen have applied their individual talents, not only to their own success, but more importantly, to the community we all live in. They have helped others and continue to help others, and for that, I salute them and we honor them tonight. Now, the evening our evening would not be complete without a uh, special mention to the Franciscan brothers, many of whom join us this evening. See, we all got excited and applauded before I was going to ask you to applaud for them, but I want them all, if they could. You know, 150 years of unbroken service since those first brothers got off the boat from Ireland. And uh, many of the brothers are here tonight, and I would ask, all of the brothers who are here to please stand and accept our thanks. Now, as chairman, I am privileged to see how many of our alumni have remained true to the Franciscan spirit and traditions and also how many friends St. Francis has. And many of you sitting here tonight, not alumni, but dear and true friends to this college. You've all been touched by the Franciscan spirit. And the alumni and friends all give generously with their contributions of time, talent, and treasure to make sure that the young people of today have the same opportunities that we had at the college. And I'm delighted tonight to be joined by one of these students, hopefully, Josefina Sola, who will be leading us in the national anthem. Again, hopefully. Josefina. Thank you. <laughs> oh, say, can you see? What so proudly we held at the top. 
twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's Play ball. Please, uh, please remain standing, if you will. Please remain standing, because I have now have the privilege to invite Brother Owen Sadler to join me and to lead us in our invocation and blessing of the foods. Brother Owen is a member of the class of St. Francis of 1969, and more importantly, currently a distinguished faculty member at the St. Francis College. And uh, I think you all be pleased to know that recently a, a scholarship has been established to uh, honor Brother Owen. And it's well-deserved and will be funded pretty quickly. Brother, can I step down? Thank you. If we may begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are gathered tonight mindful of God's presence and mindful of the Franciscan heritage of St. Francis College. It is indeed a special occasion, the 50th Charter Awards Dinner. It is a special night for the celebration and the giving thanks for all that we have been through the college. We gather to experience the grace of precious moments when alumni and friends of St. Francis College gather to preserve memories of our past, celebrate the joys of our present, and anticipate the great accomplishments of our future. We gather to experience the grace of beloved persons we honor in a special way tonight two great men from Brooklyn, Michael O'Keefe and Robert Cattell. St. Francis College is very proud to do this. But in a larger sense, we honor all of the great persons of St. Francis College, the cornerstones and the living stones of our beloved college. We honor our Chancellor, Dr. Frank Macchiarola, our President, Brendan Dugan, and all members of the faculty, staff, students, and alumni. We gather to experience the grace of life, of the life-giving power of generosity. Sacred scripture tells us that the first miracle that Jesus performed was at the wedding feast of Cana. Jesus, Mary, and his disciples gathered to celebrate, much as we are doing tonight, gathered to celebrate the wedding of a young couple looking forward to the beginnings of new life. Jesus performed a miracle of life-giving generosity when the wine ran out. He changed the simple water into the choicest wine, just so that the celebration could continue on into the future. Tonight, my dear friends, in this moment, 
we gather as alumni and friends to embrace the great mission of St. Francis College with generous hearts. And we pray that Almighty God will inspire us to rededicate our efforts to the noble work of transforming the precious water of our Franciscan past into the choice wine of our Franciscan future. May God bless us all and bless the food we are about to eat. Amen. Amen. Senate. It is a uh, resolution from the State Senate that puts the both of them in the history book for both of their accomplishments uh, and what they've been able to achieve for their business, for the industry that they came from, and from the great colleges that they came from and what they've been able to do and continue to do for all of us here and for our communities. Come on up, Bob. Come on up, uh, Buzzy. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. There's truly a saint watching over Frank Macciarola. Uh I don't know. I can't say, I used to say, the good die young. But he's a good man and he's done an exceptional amount of work. And that saint that's watching over him right now doesn't want that man home yet because he's not finished doing the great work that he does here for Brooklyn, for the city of New York, and for St. Francis College. Give him a round of applause. And of course, the true saint at that table, one might think it's Bishop Sullivan, but it's not. He will be one day, but that's his good wife, Mrs. Macchiarola. Give that good lady a round of applause as well. And Brendan Dugan, for the great work that you do at St. Francis, thank you for all the work that you've done in your past and all the great accomplishments to take the leadership role here at St. Francis College and do what you're doing is absolutely superb. Both of you gentlemen, congratulations, Bob. I can't go on to all the accomplishments that you've received in your industry and for our communities. And Buzzy, you, to you too, and thank you for all the work that you've done and continue to do and the monies that you raise and put into all the not-for-profits around our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for you? I don't know why we did this, but we got two. One for each of you again. Buzzy? Oh. Thank, anyway. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Invite and enjoy your dinner. At this time, I'd like to introduce the president of St. Francis College, former chairman of the Board of Trustees, and an, al an alumnus, Brendan Dugan, class of 1968. Brendan? You know what, I think he's just putting one of those bids down in the back, is that right? If you're bidding on Mets items, you do not have a chance with Barbara or Brendan Dugan bidding on that stuff. Thanks, Tom. That was last year, by the way, with the Mets stuff. I'd like first to uh, express my heartfelt thanks to everyone who turned out tonight and uh, for all you've done to support this event and all you do over the years in all the events that we run. The, your loyalty and generosity uh, help us continue the tradition of providing a high quality education in Brooklyn at an affordable price. I'm happy to report uh, that St. Francis College has never been more popular or active with applications and enrollment continuing to set records each year and each semester. In addition to that, we've now received Board of Regents approval for three graduate programs which will be in full operation by the fall semester. And we plan on developing three more within the next 12 months. All of these signs of vibrancy and growth just could not happen 
without the support of all of you, our friends. I just want to acknowledge uh, a couple of former Charter Award recipients who are here with us tonight. I know Joe Capitelli was here. Is Joe here? If so, please stand to be recognized. Joe is from the class of 63. Joe, are you here? <clears throat> and of course, uh, the great Chancellor, Dr. Frank Macchiarola of the class of 62. Thank you, sir. As has been said, we have two incredible honorees this evening. Bob Cattell and Buzzy O'Keefe. On a personal note, I just want to say that in my career as a banker, as someone who has served on numerous not-for-profit boards, and as a lifetime resident of Brooklyn, I've had the opportunity to observe Bob and Buzzy firsthand. I've observed their vision, their hard work, and their generosity. So we are absolutely delighted to have them as honorees this evening. <clears throat> we all know that events like this just don't happen. They're the result of meticulous planning and execution. And I just want to also express my thanks to the offices of development and Tom Flood and the Office of Alumni Relations and Dennis McDermott, all those who served on the committee, and all those who volunteered and are here with us tonight. Thank you all very, very much. This dinner was established to commemorate the granting of the Charter of St. Francis College by the state of New York in 1884. Over the century and a half that we've been in operation, we've been able to send forth graduates who are prepared to meet the challenges that they will encounter, both in their personal lives and in their professional lives. The formation of the whole person has always been at the core of our mission because it is grounded in Franciscan ideals and spirit. Our SFC students, the student body is wonderfully diverse. Diverse. People come from all cultures and backgrounds and religions, and they create this tremendous mosaic. They come with dreams, they come with desire, and they strive to be successful. Our job as the stewards of this great institution, is to make sure that we stay on the cutting edge with respect to our facilities, our technology, and our curriculum. We succeed because of a dedicated faculty and because of the opportunities, the unique opportunities that we offer in internships and job placement. And many of our benefactors with respect to internships are represented here tonight. So I want to thank you in a special way for that. Rather than go on and on and try to describe what we do and how we do it and how proud we are of it, there's a video that we've created which I now invite you uh, to look at on these two screens on my right and left. My name is Charlene Seeprasad, I'm from Woodhaven, Queens, and my major is finance. I've come to believe that if you can dream of something, if you believe, if you've got the right people behind you to encourage you, it's yours. My name is Gemma, I'm a junior at St. Francis College. I'm a double major in communications and English. I think New York can be a very daunting place, but St. Francis kind of offers a way to make it a lot more manageable with a smaller community that's really personalized. So I take a lot of specialized uh, smaller film courses where I'm really allowed to work with equipment. My name is Akeem Johnson. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and my major is criminal justice. Growing up, I felt like I wanted to be a superhero, just like every other kid. 
But as I got older, I realized that I needed to find a career, and I thought law was perfect for me. I like everything about law. Law makes everything possible. Law is what determines what's wrong and right. My name is Cindy Hernandez. I'm a biology and psychology major, and I'm from Staten Island. Starting here, I was very intimidated, very nervous, kind of scared, but I think I've grown, I've matured. A lot of different things shaped my dreams to become a pediatrician. One of the main factors was when I was 14 years old, I was misdiagnosed as a lupus patient, and I had to relearn how to walk, how to talk, and how to do everyday things like brush my teeth. I chose St. Francis because as soon as I walked through the doors, I kind of had a spiritual feeling, which I can't explain. That just connected me to the school right away. I just knew it would be my home for the next four years. I chose St. Francis College because of the community around us and the one-on-one -on -one time we had with professors and students. At St. Francis, it's really different. Like, teachers will push you, make sure you do well, and make sure you work to your full potential. My name is Joe Acherito. I'm a phys ed major here in St. Francis College, and I'm from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. The community feeling here at St. Francis is the best part of the school. It's the reason why everybody gets along in the college, and it's the reason why everybody is able to succeed in the college also. At the end of the four years that I graduate here, I'm required to student teach for a full semester. I'm involved with student government, so I'm in charge of over 35 clubs in the school. I'm also involved in the student activities department. I'm also a member of uh, St. Francis's swimming and water polo teams. I try to do new things that scare me, so I know what it'll feel like to my students. When I graduate from St. Francis College, the person that I'm going to be is one that is willing to look fear in the eye, kind of take on any challenge in life, because that's what St. Francis College has taught me. I'd really like to change the way that people see things with beautiful images, just giving them different impressions and changing the way that they see the world. Just being misdiagnosed makes me want to heal others. I want to make sure no other patient has to suffer. I face death head on, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges you can possibly face. When I started at St. Francis College, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and St. Francis College helped me decide on my major and the type of person I want to become in the future. I just have this goal of working for one of the top finance companies. Growing up in junior high school, high school, I've always been doubted. People told me I couldn't make the basketball team. People told me I couldn't be one of the top students in my class, and I ended my high school year being the captain of the basketball team and also finishing top 10 academically. Being doubted has never stopped me before. Now I actually know where I'm headed to and I have a goal set to make my dreams come true. Coming to St. Francis has really allowed me to step out of my shell and really figure out who I am in this city. But right now, I'm a lot more active, I have a lot more friends, and I think a big part of it is St. Francis College. If I accomplished my goals and achieved my dream of making society a healthier place, I think that would be awesome. If you believe it, you can accomplish it. Most of all, I just want to make my parents proud. As you figured out, these are the stars of uh, our video, and uh, one of them, Cindy Hernandez, uh, has something to say on behalf of the whole group. Cindy? Hello, everyone. My name is Cindy Hernandez, and I'm currently a sophomore at St. Francis College. I hope you enjoyed the video, because it definitely sums up the SFC experience. As stated in the piece, I was misdiagnosed patient for over seven years. When doctors finally diagnosed me with systemic lupus, I was bluntly told that within the year, I would require a kidney transplant or could possibly face death. Obviously, my doctors were wrong. It was through extreme determination and willpower 
that I was able to lead myself through some of my life's darkest hours. This particular time period was marked by slow health deterioration and a career that stripped me of basic motor and communication skills. At the age of 14, I began to overcome all of the aforementioned, and with homeschooling, I attempted to catch up with all of my peers. The final piece of the puzzle was a kidney transplant donated to me by my mother when I was 16 years old. Despite a youthful experience where I felt as if everything were being taken away from me, the support of my family and friends and faith in God made everything possible. When it came time to choose a college, I knew it was going to be yet another difficult challenge. During my senior year, I toured a variety of local and out-of-state colleges, but none came close to the feeling I received as soon as I walked through the doors of St. Francis College. It was a spiritual connection that I still cannot explain to this day. However, what I can say is that as long as I have been a part of the St. Francis community, I have also felt as if I were part of an extended family. During my freshman year at SFC, I immediately got involved on campus with the Student Government Association. I was elected Speaker of the Student Activities Council of Representatives for my sophomore year. This past year, I can truly say I developed a wide array of leadership skills and cannot understate the amount of support I have received from the SFC family. The Office of Campus Ministry also represents a very special relationship for me. Through their support and guidance, I was able to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation last May. Furthermore, I was also awarded the privilege to attend the Winter Pilgrimage to Assisi in Rome. This most recent spiritual journey has truly changed my life forever. Over a two-week span in Italy, I was introduced to and gained a stronger appreciation for the Franciscan values and our college's traditions. After returning to SFC, I began to view our college's officials in a new light. Some of my closest mentors and advisors include Dean Howell, Ruben Gonzalez, Dr. Macirola, Sister Kali, and Brother Gregory, who embody the Franciscan values as something real and achievable. Finally, this rare opportunity to visit Italy has now opened my eyes to a need to explore this world beyond my neighborhood and New York City. This summer, I will be enrolled in a study abroad semester in Italy. As you heard, my biggest dream is to become a pediatrician. This has been a goal of mine since before and ever since my earlier health scares. I want to ensure to the best of my ability that no child has to face the ordeal and pain that I had to earlier in my youth. In the words of St. Francis of Assisi, Here's a quote that I want everyone to hear. It's a quote that has guided me through my college experience. You start by doing what is necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. For me, five years ago, I would have never imagined being here. Before all of you telling my story and standing strong for the students of SFC. However, I do stand here because of a sincere family support system. I also stand here before all of you because of the generosity of SFC donors and alumni who have made attending St. Francis a financial reality. Presently, I am the recipient of a half scholarship, which has enabled me to worry less about the stresses of tuition payments and focus more on my overall goals of academic and personal enlightenment. My scholarship has also afforded me the opportunity to improve upon my study skills and join several student organizations. In the future, I hope to offer SFC students a similar financial edge. More importantly, I would love to teach others about Franciscan values and spirituality. In just two short years, I have adopted New Life's principles that include service, respect, and humility. St. Francis College has really evolved into my home away from home. And since we're all here together at night, I just want to end my speech by saying thank you, family. As President Dugan said, these are the stars of our video. But there are plenty of stars out there, so I'm going to ask the rest of those students, current students that are here tonight, please stand. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that St. Francis College is changing lives through the gift of education. Each and every one of you have made it possible for them to be at St. Francis College. And if you heard Cindy, I quote, and remember, I am a fundraiser. In the future, I hope to offer St. Francis College students a similar financial edge. That sounds like a pledge to me. <laughs> Write that down. Well, let's take a picture. And I remind you, 
Again, I am a fundraiser. The auction is still open. <laughs> Help invest in the future of St. Francis College by making your bid today, by buying a raffle ticket. The auction closes in five minutes. Thank you very much. Smokehouse. He built an ice cream shop. We had a chocolate shop. We had the best china. We had hors d'oeuvres. We had 24 desserts. We were, he was not afraid to try things, which is, I think, his success in finding great talent. Let him do what they're good at. And he supported me. He wasn't cheap. I mean, living in France costs us a lot. But he supported me in my ideas, and we had some crazy ideas. Our food was very, very experimental. Buzzy's motto was always keep it simple. So we had a good balance together. Um, he gave me confidence. He gave me a lot of confidence to go over to Japan and win. He gave me a lot of pride. He gave me a lot of uh, a discipline. Um, and I'm just one of the guys in this room that Buzzy's probably touched. I know I'm one of many people in the restaurant industry that he's helped. He's a man of great vision and intellect. He's a humble, caring, and generous man. He's a mentor, and he's a great friend. And I'm truly honored to know him, Michael Buzzy O'Keefe. And for all, the, for all the aforementioned reasons, St. Francis College is pleased and proud to confer on Michael D. O'Keefe the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Oh Well, <clears throat> my sister's barber's down here at table 11, my nephews and my brother-in-law. <clears throat> so from this day forward, when you call me, say, Dr. Buzz. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, so many nice things have been said tonight. Uh, I, I assume my mother was, must have been whispering in somebody's ear. Uh, and to have David Burke, David Burke, uh, I found out Dave was going to introduce me. I mean, see, how, how is he going to leave his hundred restaurants and come down and spend time here in, you know, in the Marriott? Um, I wasn't exactly Dave's teacher, but I, I think, I'm sure I was his mentor. Um, and when, to do that job properly, you must try to make the student be better than yourself. So to have Dave here is just a great thing because there's no one more creative than Dave and I've produced a lot of, a lot of chefs have come out of the River Cafe um, and um, Dave is unquestionably considered the most creative and <clears throat> pretty much a creative genius. Another quality that uh, a lot of people in the industry are bewildered by and wondering about is it, how come so many beautiful women gravitate to David Burke? <laughs> um, I mean, this is, this is real. This is, we just scratch our heads and say, you're in a crowd and all the beautiful women come over and start flirting with David. And you go, what about us? <laughs> <clears throat> the premise at the River Cafe has always been that Good enough is not good enough. Good enough is for those people who don't really care, who don't have any passion for what they do. I'm trying to focus in here with the shadows with this mic. <clears throat> Maybe America should adopt that philosophy. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. David Burke is one of the greatest to come out of the River Cafe. Well, well, enough about Dave. Let's talk about me. 
I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. <laughs> when something was mentioned about this evening quite a while back, I, I, thought it was a, I really thought it was a joke. And then someone told me they saw my name on an invitation. And of course, then I knew it must have been a conspiracy between Brendan Dugan, Dennis McDermott, and Thomas Flood, something like that. And I knew I was in trouble. Then I got a message, a directive, really, that I would be required to speak for 68 minutes. <laughs> and I thought, guy in my position, that's easy. I can talk all night and tell stories about this. And then someone said, no, 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 six to eight minutes. <laughs> I did some investigation at the St. Francis and the Franciscans. I knew a bit about them, but on looking more deeply, one has to say, wow. Poverty, chastity, humility, obedience, living simply, all those things everyone else is trying to avoid. No fancy cars, no fancy offices. These men, they are all called brothers, and they are the real deal. I went to a Jesuit, I went to a few Jesuit schools, and I used to refer to the Jesuits as the Marines of the church. And that may be true, but the Franciscans, it is easy to see, are the special forces and the special ops. <clears throat> My sister and I went to a grammar school on the other side of a cloistered Franciscan monastery, or nunnery, uh, the poor class, where I often brought striped bass I caught to a very small door in this walled off monastery. Unbeknownst to almost everyone, my sister Barbara is in her 24th year of managing 250 Franciscan volunteers working for Father Benedict Rochelle, ministering to the poor, and a grandchild Astrid was one of the few baptized by Father Benedict Rochelle. So the, the Franciscans have always been around us. So the person who probably deserved to be up here more than me is my sister sitting down here at table 11. If somebody should, she should stand up. And, and what is so special about St. Francis? With so many brothers and teachers dedicating their lives, most without any monetary or material reward, to developing the minds and spirits of so many young men and women, it is more important than ever when material and spiritual things are portrayed throughout the media as the ultimate meaning and essence of life, that here they have a chance to learn the true meaning and essence of life, honor, integrity, thoughtfulness, loyalty, kindness, and tolerance, where they won't be so quick to sell their soul for a few dollars or, or a fortune of dollars. There are, I, I have employed a few students that are here tonight that are both 4-0 students coming into this school who could have gone to college anywhere in the country, but they chose St. Francis. And that speaks a lot about what's going on here at St. Francis a small college that really does a fabulous job to the people who, who don't have all the things that some of the other uh, students have going to the more expensive schools. They come here in St. Francis and they excel and they go on to do, become great citizens for this country. I want to thank you all tonight. I was very proud to be honored with Bob Cattell and I'm very proud to, that Brenda Dugan and what he's done for this school and, and uh, everybody here should be uh, do whatever they can in the future to help see that this St. Francis College prospers better, more and more each year. Thank you very much. Now, if you could just go to the middle, all of you, and I'll take a picture. As they posed for that picture, there were so many kind words said about Chef Burke and President Daly. I think we have future honorees right in our midst. We'll talk afterwards. 
Again, please give our honorees and our special guests a round of applause. Well, there's the music. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the administration, and above all, the students of St. Francis College, please accept our heartfelt thanks for all of you for being champions of St. Francis and for making the gift of education possible on Remsen Street. St. Francis is an institution that is built on service and generosity. And with friends like you, we can deliver on the promise to our students the one that's all around us, that the small college can deliver and does deliver big dreams.